Welcome back to another episode of the e-learning series on GFSM, the Government Finance Statistics Manual. Today, we will be talking about two basic concepts related to fiscal analysis. In GFSM, we refer to stocks and flows. I will explain what these two measures are and how they relate. Let's look at an example. Suppose the government has a fleet of police cars. Recently, it became increasingly obvious that felons fleeing in their cars can very easily outdistance the officers. The government cleverly decides to gradually improve its fleet and to replace some cars with better ones. Our question is, what are the fiscal implications of that decision? How will government finance statistics illustrate? Two types of measures will provide us with all necessary fiscal information. That's stocks and flows. To start off with, what is a stock measure? Put simply, a stock measure shows the value of the government's possessions. It assigns a value to an object or group of objects at a particular point in time. In our example, a stock measure would, for instance, show the value of the car fleet today. You could think of a stock measure as a snapshot photo that depicts the value of something at a specific moment, usually the end of a year or a quarter or a month. A government takes stock of its possessions periodically. By this exercise, it knows the structure of its assets and their total value. Over time, government takes these snapshots and it will see the value of its possessions evolve. However, these snapshots don't allow you to understand what happened between two points in time. Rather than snapshot photos, one would need a movie for that. And this brings us to the other statistical measure, flows. To understand what happens between snapshots, we also need flow information. Flows will cover the value of all fiscal events that occurred in the period. In our example, that could be purchases of new cars. Adding brand new cars to the existing ones will increase the total value of the fleet, hence the stock value will rise. In that same period, the government could also sell some of the older cars. The government is then receiving money and at the same time it will decrease the value of the stock. In addition, the cars will lose some value during the period just because time passes by and the cars are used. This is called consumption of fixed capital in statistics, a concept related but not identical to depreciation in accounting. So even if the number of cars remains unchanged, the value of the fleet can vary. Now let's put this together in one picture. Remember at the start of the period, our government already had a fleet of cars. Then it bought some new cars, it sold others, and at the end was left with a different stock with a different value. Our closing stock is accordingly the result of what we had in the beginning, plus the value of all acquisitions and minus the value of all disposals during the period, and minus the consumption of fixed capital. Together, GFSM calls these flows net investment in non-financial assets. So you see that stocks and flows have a clearly defined relationship. In fact, we will see in a minute that in GFSM, this relationship can be expressed by an explicit mathematical equation, which illustrates an accounting identity. Now, police cars are, of course, just an example for one type of stock, but it is a good example of a group of assets that GFSM calls non-financial assets. In total, there are three categories of stock in GFSM, non-financial assets, financial assets, and liabilities. And there are corresponding flows to those stocks. Police cars are part of the asset category transport equipment, which is a subcategory of machinery and equipment, which is a subcategory of fixed assets. GFSM provides four categories of non-financial assets with a classification tree down to detailed subcategories that can be used for analysis. You can see non-financial assets most often relate to tangible objects, things you can actually touch or use. The valuation of those is sometimes a challenge, especially if those goods are not traded on markets and their values cannot be observed. But this information is vital for sound fiscal analysis and management. More and more governments and analysts around the world recognize the importance of this. Those were the non-financial assets. On the other hand, a second category of assets exists. These are financial by nature and are accordingly called financial assets. An example is currency and deposits. The amount of cash a government owns at a particular time is a quite straightforward stock measure. And this too is affected by flows. As the government collects taxes or sells cars, it will receive cash for this. The stock goes up. As it pays bills, salaries or buys police cars, the stock will go down. Again, it will be the difference between the inflows and outflows that directly links to the evolution of the stock value. 
GFSM, calls this net acquisition of financial assets. Apart from currency and deposits, the government may also possess other types of financial assets. GFSM provides eight main categories for financial assets. Cash is the most liquid category, but there are others like debt securities, bonds for example, loans, or shares, and equity. Below the main level, you will also find more detailed subcategories that allow for a more specific analysis. You see that assets are objects a government owns or financial instruments it holds, but assets are just one side of stocks, liabilities being the other. Stock measures also exist for what the government owes to others. If, for example, the government has incurred loans, you can determine a stock value for this liability at a particular point in time. Newly incurred loans will add to that stock as will accruing interest, and repayments will reduce the stock. Together, these flows are called net incurrence of liabilities. And here's some good news. The categories for liabilities correspond with financial assets. That's because in GFSM, as in other macroeconomic statistics, both concepts are directly related, like mirror images of each other. Put simply, the liability of one party is considered the financial asset of the other. Once again, we have a tree of subcategories. Loans and debt securities that typically hold the highest values of government liabilities, and a couple of other categories. Government debt or public debt is obviously a very important stock measure for fiscal analysis, and it is directly related to the liability categories. In fact, all but two qualify as debt liabilities because they involve the payment of principal and interest. Now let's bring all of this together. We have the three categories of stocks, non-financial assets, financial assets, and liabilities. We have the opening stock values, we have flows affecting those stocks, they are called transactions in assets and liabilities, and we have the values of the stocks at the close of the period. To make this relationship complete, we only need another type of flow, which is called other economic flows. This covers changes in the values of the stock that are not the result of government transactions, such as price changes or destructions by natural disaster. With this, we have a fully integrated system. This means we can relate stocks and flows like a mathematical equation. So the GFSM framework is set up to fully explain all changes that occur within the period and provide a direct link between stocks and flows. And this relationship holds at all levels. You can either just look at non-financial assets as a group, at fixed assets, or even go right down to the level of transport equipment. To close off, Let's see how our government fared with the new police cars. Hmm. It turns out that now the government can catch up, but still, it cannot outpace. But wait, the government also wisely invested in advanced driver training, and it seems that this has paid off. So you see, you just have to know the right tricks. This, of course, also applies to GFS.